Dilla, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. And just in case we ever do go live and y'all miss it, man, this right behind us. This is where all the live stuff will be posted, man. It's a little slow right now, man. So, hey, if anybody wants to, you know, holla at me and get some access to this and who watches the channel and can make shorts and and could, has time to do all of that, let me know. Because the channel was ran by the people. Um, anywho, don't forget we do got the Discord as well. Link to that is in the description. And we also got the Patreon, man. If you're ever looking for a way to support me and you want to support the channel and you want to help with whatever you can help with, just sign up for Patreon. There's three tiers. The lowest is, I think, three pounds, 15 pence, 50 pence. And, you know, a little goes a long way, man. Plus, you get to fight, watch some fire content. Uh, link to that down in the description as well. Let's get to this, man. I've been seeing this for at least the last six months. And it's, it's about time that I educate myself on it, on, on it and what's going on around it in the UK. Brexit explained. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Brexit explained for confused Americans. This is from four years ago. Let me tell you where I was four years ago. Not in a history book. Not in current events around the world not caring about the economics of anything. You know what I'm saying? So, now that I'm no longer in school or anything, <laughs> education is fun. <laughs> so let's educate. <laughs> Welcome to class. Are you an American who's having a hard time making any sense of Brexit news? Absolutely. Yeah! Maybe you feel a hard time making any sense of Brexit news? Yeah! Maybe you feel like you should know a little bit more about what's going on in the UK, but you're worried it's too late to ask. Stick your flag with stars on up your It seems like every week we hear about another crucial world ending stars on up your it, Leave it up to the UK, they're gonna make a chant about anything, I swear. It seems like every week we hear about another crucial world ending vote in Britain's parliament. It's not your fault if you don't know what ending vote in Britain's parliament. It's my it's my it's it, it, it's up to me to react and see stuff that y'all might not see. This is the second time he been up there and his hair been a mess. That's two times. It's not your fault if you don't know what's going on because nobody knows what's going on. Since the UK voted to leave the European Union in June 2016, it hasn't been able to figure out what that actually means. Brexit means Brexit. And time is running out. The UK is supposed to leave by March 29th. So why is it all so complicated? Well, this isn't an issue that easily maps onto one party that wants it versus another that doesn't. Supporters of the Labour Party and the Conservative Party both voted for Brexit and against it for very different reasons. Britain joined the EU in the 1970s, and many of those who voted to leave it say it takes away from the sovereignty of Britain. That's why the motto of the Leave campaign was take back control, which may feel a little ironic in these chaotic days. Those who voted to remain, on the other hand, see the EU as a protector of human rights and the freedom of movement, both for people and for businesses. Brexit is such a massive injustice. What makes things even more complicated is Ireland. After 40 years of sectarian con what makes things even more complicated is Ireland. After 40 years of sectarian conflict, those who thought that Northern Ireland should be part of the UK and those who thought it should be part of the Republic of Ireland reached a peace agreement in 1998 that depends on keeping an open. Republic of Ireland reached a peace agreement in 19. It's not really a peace agreement. I don't know what this is. This is not a handshake. 98 that depends on keeping an open border. If the UK is part of the EU, that's easy to do. If it's not, it isn't. First of all, let's be very clear about this. You may have heard the term backstop floating around. It's been called an insurance policy, the backstop. This is a requirement which the EU has demanded in Brexit negotiations, that no matter what happens, there has to be an open border in Ireland. The EU won't agree to new trade agreements without the backstop. This might mean that the UK actually can't properly leave the EU. 
and this only makes the pro. Right, that's what it sounds like. If you leave, you leave, but you're still with us at the end of the day. Brexit crowd even more eager to leave it. If your country can't leave the EU after all, is it really a democratic arrangement in the first place? It's so anti-democratic that we're not accepting the will of the people. So the backstop is one of the reasons there are so many negotiations and votes. We have made progress on Northern Ireland. Prime Minister Theresa May already came up with one deal which included the backstop, which the British Parliament rejected. They also then the next day rejected a motion to reject her. It was a whole thing. Reject this deal. Reject this deal because of the harm it would do. Now, Theresa May has been flying around meeting with European leaders, Ooh. trying to come up with a new deal, even though nobody can agree upon what terms they would agree upon. I've been wondering what that special place in hell looks like for those who promoted Brexit without even a sketch of a plan. You might be wondering at this point, why can't Britain just vote again if this is all such a big mess? That could happen. Really, anything could happen. If there was a second referendum, polls do show that Remain has a lead, for now. But opinions change and are influenced by campaigns. You can't rule out that people would vote for Brexit again. You see, this is no longer about Brexit. It's no longer about the European Union. This is now about our democracy. If there's anything the past two years have taught us, it's to never think things are certain in politics. As March 29th looms, there's also the chance that the UK will extend the deadline to leave. But like a stressed out student asking a professor for an essay extension, that may only serve to push off big problems to a later date. Meanwhile, some in the UK are now cheering for the most uncertain path of all, a no deal Brexit. But you can't just vote to reject no deal, you have to vote for a deal. There are worries about food and medicine shortages if that happens. Britain's entire economy could be reduced overnight to hot takes about Meghan Markle. Mm, this is four years ago, what's going on right now? Mm, it's getting rough over there, ain't it? Okay. People's latest nail polish color. But many of the same people who campaigned most enthusiastically for Brexit in the first place are now pushing for Britain to take the plunge into a no deal Brexit. They're saying that all Britain needs is a bit of that blitz spirit that got the UK through World War II, which as everyone knows was no trouble whatsoever. You'll see more votes in the coming weeks, but for now, it doesn't look like any of them will resolve any of the issues surrounding Brexit. As time marches on, the United Kingdom marches on with it. Towards what though? Nobody knows. Well, four years later, and the economy, food, housing, Job strikes. Is this all a? Does this all have any connection? Y'all gotta let me know in the comments. We're not done here. First of all, let's go back. Um, now, now that I know a little about what Brexit is, not I'm still kind of unclear. I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. I think Brexit is just the term of exiting the UK. One in the not the UK. Uh, London wanting to exit, not London, damn. <laughs> Britain wanting to exit some type of economic plan that they had. I don't know. Anyway, why the UK is doomed after Brexit? This was three weeks ago. Are you a business owner or looking to start? Um, ma'am. The longest five seconds of my life. 2016. June 23rd, 2016. The referendum on European Union membership has been voted on and Brexit has passed. The United Kingdom will be leaving the EU and its supporters are ecstatic. But be careful. The United Kingdom has left the EU. Okay. To wish for because Brexit might have long term devastating consequences for the United Kingdom. Brexit is the star with the flag with the star with the circles on it. Be careful what you wish for because this one behind my head. Brexit might have long term devastating consequences for the United Kingdom's stability. In fact, could it lead to the end of one of the world's oldest democracies? Here's how Brexit could wind up destroying the United Kingdom. There was a lot of time to debate the consequences. EU, European Union. Got it. Is that what that is? Okay. Y'all gotta remember. Of Brexit, and many people tried to. United Kingdom. 
There was a lot of time to debate the consequences of Brexit, and many people tried to stop it in its tracks, including an attempt to topple the Prime Minister that nearly led to an unlikely coalition with a controversial Labour leader. But in the end, the UK left the EU on January 31, 2020, okay. about two months before the world got completely turned upside down by a pandemic, lockdowns, and everything else associated with 2020, so that makes separating Brexit's consequences from the effects of everything else a little tricky. Right, right, because everything, the world was on pause anyway, so you couldn't really see the effects that leaving the EU had on Britain. Okay. But there have definitely been consequences. The main goal of Brexit was to gain back that can-do, self-sufficient British spirit that got the country through the wars. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't know about that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to compare this to leaving your parents' house. You know what I'm saying? When you hit 18... You feel like, oh, I could do it on my own. I'm going to love being an adult and getting it and paying. But no. Put me back in my mama crib. I don't like it out here. <laughs> That's how I feel. About okay. And while some might argue that it's worked, it also meant cutting Britain off from a much larger network of support. The exactly. EU is made up of 27 countries, all of which have an agreement that allows free travel between member states as well as favorable trade terms, and the UK is now outside looking in. It might have seemed like a great idea at first, but it wouldn't be long before the UK started feeling the negative effects. And almost three years in, the consequences keep building. For one thing, the UK has seen a significant increase in labor shortages. This is because yeah. many foreign workers fill jobs around the EU, and after Brexit, they now have to get permission to work in the UK. Getting a work visa can be time-consuming, uh, and what makes more sense, applying to work in one country or working to apply in a network of 27 countries? That makes the UK a distant second choice for those looking to work in Europe. This has led to vacancies at the local yeah, that sucks. Okay. pub horrors. But it's also led to many job openings in critical fields like healthcare because the foreign nationals just aren't coming. Wow. And that plays a key role in another critical area. It's easy to make jokes about British food. Mushy peas? Pudding made from blood? But Britain does have a thriving agricultural sector that can keep the country fed through the year. Farmers often simply don't have the staff to harvest all their crops, and that leads to harvests being wasted, which leads See, this is what I was talking about, see? This is why everything fell through would appear. I don't know who was against this in the comments. I wish I could make a poll in the comments. Who was against this and who? If you was against this, leave a like. If you was for it, leave a comment. Engagement. Leads to farms going bankrupt and empty shelves at the supermarket. Industrial farms often employ up to 3,000 workers per harvest season, many of them from countries in Eastern Europe, and the lack of staff is killing their ability to supply Britain with food. Britain might have been able to fulfill some of its food needs domestically, but it has and still does import much of its food from abroad. In fact, very short-lived Prime Minister Liz Truss shocked her party conference when she informed them that the UK imports two-thirds of its cheese from abroad. This was clearly a disgrace, because you can't have a stuffy politician's conference without some cheese. But the simple act of importing food has now become much more challenging due to Brexit. Mm -hmm. Under EU laws, tariffs and inspections were largely minimal. But now every import and export deal has to be renegotiated. What's more, the government wants to- Just making things that used to take a day, take 24 days, 30 days. That's, that's. ...impose new import controls, which could make accommodating for the farming shortages even trickier. But this isn't the only thing made trickier by Brexit. Travel in the EU sounds strange to most people living outside of the Union. How did 27 independent countries agree to allow their citizens to travel across their borders without passport checks? Well, it took a lot of cooperation and trust. The UK may be an island, but the residents still crossed over frequently via a tunnel under the English Channel, which connected them to France via a high-speed train line. But the times, they are a-changing. So you telling me when it's time for me to go to the UK finally? Well, it wouldn't really affect me, like right? Because so, no, hold on, wait a minute. When it's time for me to visit the UK, I was going to the EU at first. If I was going to win in 2019, so I'm going to have one stamp for everything. Is that what I'm hearing, or no? If I would have went to Great, I, see, I me as a foreigner to y'all, I would have had to show a passport anyway to every every single place. 
It wouldn't have mattered, right? So it wouldn't have had no effect on me because I don't live there. While the UK and the EU have travel maintained wise. freedom of travel between the two, they are still oh, okay. allies and members of NATO after all. They're now considered different countries, and that means anyone who crosses across the English Channel via train should bring their passport and be prepared for more security checks. A minor complication, but one that could still put the... <laughs> that sucks. What if you didn't have a passport? What if you didn't have enough money to get a passport? Damper on a vacation if a key document gets left behind. And if Brexit has brought about one thing, it's lines. Brexit seems to have meant more bureaucracy, more documents, and more delays. Just about everywhere. This is the most common at the borders, and nowhere was it more obvious than in July 2022 when those trying to enter the country via the port of Dover found themselves waiting and waiting and waiting. Sound like America. While conservative politicians originally said there would be no major delays, the simple act of requiring passport checks soon snowballed into massive six-hour waits. And it wasn't just at British ports. Suddenly, all those quick check lines that allowed British visitors to just sail through European passport checks were no more. And all <sighs> ports around the European Union found themselves facing major delays as they had to check that British tourists were there legally and had plans to return. Guess Brits heading abroad had better practice their stiff upper lip. But just about everyone is going to feel the impact of Brexit in some way. It's not just food-related imports and exports that have taken a big hit. In the first year after Brexit, it was estimated that exports to Europe fell by around... A lot of people... 14% may not sound like a lot, but that's a huge number. Especially when you got a, a, a country to feed, you know what I'm saying? It was partially due to COVID, but the impact has continued to be felt, and a big part of that is the increased fees, security, and paperwork that everyone has to deal with. That includes countless small businesses which have found it more expensive than ever to send their goods abroad. Many long-time small businesses might decide to close their doors rather than try to compete in this brave new market and will likely be replaced with either locally focused businesses or more likely multinational chains that are used to navigating the bureaucracy. And that has meant lasting issues for the economy. Part of the appeal of Brexit was that the United Kingdom could move away from the EU's costly fees and sharing arrangements, which were meant to boost the welfare of poorer countries with the help of wealthier ones like Britain and France. And the UK does Well, you ended up, you ended up spending money anyway. ...doesn't have to pay those fees anymore. But that might not be a positive. Since Brexit happened, the EU's gross domestic product has jumped by over 8%, while the UK's growth is less than 4%. That's well below expectations, and while much of this can be attributed to COVID, the country's trouble getting workers and exporting its products definitely isn't helping either. So Britain is making less money, but it might be spending more domestically too. Inflation... And then because people can't get work visas, you know, for to work in the UK, it's like there's plenty of jobs there that people don't want to do. You get what I'm saying? Like, like all of that, oh yeah, we want our jobs for our inside of our, we want our jobs for the people that are from our place. Like, no, I don't want to do some of these. Me personally, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to get here and name specific jobs because y'all going to try to cancel me. But I ain't doing some of the jobs. I don't want to do it. Can you imagine me being a farmer? I'll just say farmer. Can you imagine me being a farmer? Have you ever seen one of me as a farmer? Besides 400 years ago? Or, 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 or not, not 400. Well, yeah, 100 years ago. But like, no, I'm not farming nothing. I don't want to do it. <laughs> You is really? the word on everyone's minds right now. It seems like everything is costing more these days, from airline fares to grocery staples. Some people blame all the money going to help Ukraine fight off the Russian invaders. Other people blame corporate greed. The answer is complicated, but one thing is for sure. Inflation isn't the same in every country, and Britain is having a much worse time than the average EU member. It uses the British pound rather than the euro, keeping its own currency even when it was in the EU. And now the pound is weakening significantly. Inflation in the eurozone seems to be starting to improve. Well, it's almost on the same level as the dollar. But that's not helping the United Kingdom. And the ongoing supply chain issues and labor problems certainly aren't helping investors feel more confident in the country's future. But Brexit isn't just detrimental to Britain's economy, it's damaging its culture. 
The United Kingdom is a major hub for tourism, coming in 10th place by number of Ah, okay, so here's what I, where my question was. Okay. Arrivals and fifth by tourism revenue, boosted by a number of factors. It's one of the closest international destinations that speaks English for Americans to visit if they don't want to learn another language. It also has no shortage of tourist attractions, ranging from Big Ben and Windsor Castle, home of the royal family, to more modern attractions like the Alton Towers theme park. It even has legendary historical sites like Stonehenge. But will the tourists keep coming? American tourists are likely to keep coming as their situation hasn't really changed. Although the okay, that's what I was saying, like okay, our can our it doesn't change for me really. Increased cost for flights might cause some to decide Canada is a better international destination instead. But as for EU tourists, they might want to go to Britain. But then they look at all the requirements and might think that the Colosseum in Rome or the Eiffel Tower might make a little more sense. First of all, why are these cartoon characters so busty? You know what I'm saying, like instead. But as for e you tourists, they might Why is she so curvy? <laughs> you get me? Want to go to Britain. But then they look at all the requirements and might think that the Colosseum in Rome or the Eiffel Tower might make a little more sense. While tourism revenue is still in complete flux right now due to the pandemic, it's only starting to recover and no one is sure if Britain's overall economy will ever fully recover. But tourism isn't just fun and games, for some people it's their livelihood. It's a time-honored tradition for the performing arts, the traveling showmen. It dates back to the bards of the Middle Ages, who would travel from town to town singing their songs and hoping for tips from the populace. And not to anger the local authorities, today the country roads have been replaced with vans of traveling musicians searching for the next gig, and for British musicians, those gigs just got a lot harder. Now going on tour means dealing with a seemingly never-ending array of bureaucracy. Not only do they have to apply for a visa to perform in the EU, they might have to deal with different regulations at every border, including searches that pose the risk of damaging their costly musical equipment. And it's created some big roadblocks for even the biggest British musicians. In the past, continental Europe was home to some of the biggest music festivals in the world. British musicians considered these festivals mainstays of their tours, but now the associated costs of heading to those festivals have caused many British artists to scale back their plans. The result? A near 50% decrease in British artists playing at EU festivals. This has not only affected the artists' bottom line, and their opportunity to boost their profile, it's affected the quality of those festivals. I was looking for a way to oh man, I, I don't make some extra money. I saw this video of a guy. See, I think they're just gonna keep trying to push through or get through it. This too shall pass type of thing, or eventually they'll be like, nah, let me get back in the EU. Or what do y'all think? have to deal with the added bureaucracy at the borders, but they have to pay a different tax rate for each country they visit. It's almost enough for a struggling musician to take dad's advice, give up the guitar, and get a decent job at the fish factory. Oh, about that fish factory. Back in the early days of the campaign for Brexit, one group was louder than the others, the fishermen. They were tired of EU regulations on fishing, which gave other countries access to rich British fishing waters and required the workers on the sea to abide by European rules on sustainability and other quotas. They were looking forward to Britain taking back the seas and giving their industry a new lease on life and, of course, making fish and chips, an iconic staple of British cuisine, cheaper than ever. Unfortunately for those who enjoy their fish and chips, Brexit might have made their favorite dish more expensive. The final Brexit agreement divided up the fishing waters around the UK, which did not give British fishermen quite as much as they wanted. But there's been a much bigger consequence to the split. As fish and seafood exports have massively decreased to the EU, the costs of shipping are so high that the fishing companies often lose money on every shipment abroad. This Don't even be seen and worth it no more. I think a one for a love for one's country, like I get it. There's nothing wrong with it to be, to love your country, love where you're from, and want it all to be to yourself. But it's like at the same time, it's almost a little bit greedy. And I don't know, like y'all gotta, you know, I'm from the outside looking in, so it's like. Y'all did all, some of y'all did all of that. And now look at the consequences that's going on. Y'all wanted it for the better. Y'all thought stuff would be cheaper, stuff would be, I don't, I don't know. They, or are they purposely making it harder? I don't, I don't know. Man. 
I'm just going to continue to watch. This means the catch is mostly for domestic use, which means less fish are needed. This has led to fishing companies scaling back their business, yeah, and see? many fishermen are looking for a more profitable line of work with greater stability. Hmm. If y'all would have just chilled out, so <laughs> everybody would have been eating. Still. Maybe it's time to go back to school. Brexit has caused a lot of damage to the UK's educational sector as well, particularly its universities. The population of foreign students has decreased, and the number of British students allowed to study abroad has dropped as well. This is all due to the border issue, but the bigger problem might be invisible. Research programs between universities are the backbone of the educational world, and the difficulty of traveling from one country to another has made many specialists from abroad hesitant to work with the British universities on long-term projects. This mainly means research projects could be cancelled or delayed, British universities could see a brain drain, and future students could see fewer I feel like this video is all on the negative. Is there any positive to this? Opportunities for growth. But a much bigger problem might be brewing because the United Kingdom isn't so united anymore. The United Kingdom is composed of four distinct regions. England, at the heart of the Big Island, Scotland, Scotland. to the north, Wales on the west coast, yeah. and Northern Ireland up atop Britain's longtime rival, Ireland. All four regions have their own distinct culture, dialect, traditions, and an intense sense of local pride. Independence movements exist in all four. Scottish independence narrowly failed a few years before Brexit, and Welsh independence movements are quieter but still prominent. As for Northern Ireland, while it's still majority Protestant and not exactly in sync with the rest of Ireland, more of its citizens are considering the possibility of a united Ireland as the troubles fade into history. Even after all of the pressure, the UK has refused to consider any other independence movement movements after the last Scottish referendum. But thanks to Brexit, that might be changing. When the voters of Scotland narrowly rejected independence in 2014, it was largely a vote for the status quo. Young voters swung in favor of independence, hoping Scotland would be a more progressive country as opposed to the UK's long, long streak of Tory prime ministers. Older voters, meanwhile, tilted the balance in favor of remaining. Maybe it was their loyalty to the crown, maybe it was that they liked the conservative governments, or maybe it was just that they liked how things worked and they didn't want to see them change right now. The problem is, they no longer work that way. When the UK left the European Union, so went all the privileges of membership. Whether the Scottish people voted for them or not, Scotland voted overwhelmingly to remain by a 62 to 38 margin, but were outvoted in the end, and many now wonder if an independent Scotland could apply to rejoin the European Union. It wouldn't be guaranteed, but the yeah. Yeah. odds are that the EU leadership would be sympathetic to them and consider them for membership quickly. Polls now show that support for a second Scottish referendum on independence has skyrocketed and would likely pass this time. The government has refused to allow it, but it's not clear how long they can hold out. And it's not the only country in the UK getting increasingly agitated. The vote was a mixed bag in Wales, with most counties narrowly voting to leave, but several major coastal counties voting to remain. The margin was close. It's like everybody's not on the same page. Or... 52 to 47 to leave. The Welsh independence movement has always been the quietest of the three, but its supporters are gaining momentum, and recent polls showed support has risen to over 40%. A Welsh independence movement would be an underdog right now, but if Scotland successfully gains independence, it might energize the supporters even more, and more referendums come down to turnout and enthusiasm. An independent Wales would be a small country and have less sway with the EU at first compared to Scotland, but it could easily follow its larger neighbor's path. And then there's the very thorny issue of Northern Ireland. While not as decisive as Scotland, Northern Ireland's 55% majority in I feel like I'm watching all of this and it's going to conclude in a war at one point. Like, I don't know why I'm getting war. I'm like, it's giving war vibes. I don't know why. Like hearing this stuff, it's just like, oh my god. Countries wanted rallying for their independence. Then somebody's eventually gonna or try to overtake a smaller country or make want them to join and they're not gonna want to. And then this country allies and then like, oh man favor of remaining was easy to understand. The religious divide in Ireland led to decades of bloody conflict, and the status quo of both Ireland and the UK being members of the European Union helped to keep things on a low boil. But now, there was a much bigger issue to contend with, a border in the middle of Ireland that might separate families on the two sides. While obviously nowhere near as strictly guarded as the other countries, this prospect caused enough panic that a negotiation was ironed out to keep an open border between Ireland and the UK. 
but the strong support for the EU in Northern Ireland has led to many moderates in the region wondering if the time was right to open the issue of reuniting the two countries, with a 2022 poll showing a slim margin in favor of reuniting within 20 years. Will all these happen? Unlikely, but they could, and the results would be catastrophic for England. An image of the Brexit vote results show that England was largely on its own in its strong support for leaving. That means that a majority of the UK's land space was strongly against the decision England made. And all of them are considering breaking away. If independence movements took off, England could find itself losing half of its land space, many of its resources and much of its global prestige. All three nations would likely seek to join the EU. England would lose access to Ireland and would have to negotiate with other countries. That's an ugly look. <laughs> That's not a good... That don't... That, to me, outside looking in, that don't sound good. ...trees for imports of the goods it used to own. It would be a massive... Sounds like a headache for England if that was to happen. ...black eye for the country that used to rule much of the world, not even be... Join hundreds of high achievers. Cap. Mm. ...being able to hold on to its own constituent countries, which raises a question. Is there any way back? To say some people in the UK have buyer's remorse over the whole Brexit thing would be putting it lightly. They lost a lot more. That's about to say, like, some of y'all gotta be like, dang, we shouldn't even did that. Than they expected, and the benefits that they were promised did not really manifest. We While many have called for finding a way to halt the process, the ruling Tories were strongly in favor of moving ahead, and the current Labour leader at the time was Brexit ambivalent at best, being opposed to NATO. And once it went ahead, there was no going back. It looked like the Brexit status quo was here to stay, for the good or the bad. But there might be another route back. By October 2022, a poll showed that the Britons favored rejoining the EU by a whopping 14-point margin. And while the heavy favor to be PM after the next election, Labour leader Keir Starmer has not yet called for reversing Brexit. Who? Be PM after the next election, Labour leader Keir Starmer has. He's not that. <laughs> they talking about him? I mean him. He's the per current prime minister. Not yet called for reversing Brexit, he's considered to be favorable toward the EU. That might mean the UK could eventually find a bipartisan agreement on the issue. But they might have to do it the hard way. No country has ever left the EU and then rejoined it, and there is no by. Well, you know, Valencia, uh, uh, Adidas left Kanye and came back, so hey law for takey backsies. So the easiest way for the UK to get back in would be asking to rejoin and then going through the whole process of applying, having its application reviewed and then approved or denied. It would likely be a multi-year process, and they're not the only ones asking to join. Many countries in Eastern Europe, like Bosnia and Herzegovina and the under-attack Ukraine, are seeking to join as well. So the UK might have to go to the back of the line. Something they're well used to giving all the lines after Brexit. But it may be the best of bad alternatives. Right now, the UK is living with the fallout of Brexit, which includes import and export problems, empty shelves at supermarkets, a shrinking economy, poorer diplomatic relations with its neighbors, stricter border controls, and decreased opportunity for travel and business. In the long run, it don't even sound fun to be there right now. God damn it! It could even undermine their bond with the constituent countries, and could result in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland going their own way, possibly back to the EU. This means that the UK might be looking for the escape hatch on the Brexit experiment sooner rather than later. Want to know just how powerful Great Britain used to be? Check out. That's tough. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, man. I'm gone.